In this short presentation, I would like to review the chest X-ray presentation of pleural pathology, such as pneumothorax, pleural effusion, and pleural masses. Typically, on chest radiograph, the pleura and the pleural spaces are not visible unless there is an underlying pathology present, such as in this case pleural effusion, which outlines the interlobar fissures. This is a two-view chest radiograph of a cardiac patient who underwent median stenotomy and cabbage. You can see that there is borderline cardiomegaly and there are small bilateral pleural effusions. There is a meniscus sign bilaterally, and on the lateral view, here you can see the pleural effusion in the meniscus sign. For interest sake, this patient also has an azygous fissure, and this is the azygous vein, which as it came down, pulled the pleural layers with it. So this is actually four layers of pleura that you see here for the azygous fissure. Here you can see an AP view chest radiograph and an axial slide from a CT chest, which demonstrates coarse pleural calcifications bilaterally. These present like amorphous poorly defined opacities over both lung zones. They are just way too dense for them to be multifocal pneumonia. They are dense just like the adjacent bone. And you can see also calcification outlining the pleural surfaces along the bilateral hemidiaphragm. In asbestos-related pleural disease, you may see pleural effusion first, uh, which might take actually 10 years to develop after exposure. Over the years, the patients may develop sub-tissue thickening of the pleura, pleural nodules, and calcified pleural plaques as well, as you can see on these images. These two images demonstrate a large left pleural effusion. You can see the meniscus sign, both on the AP and the lateral view. Pleural effusion is fairly commonly seen on chest radiography and maybe a simple effusion due to heart failure, renal failure. Uh, it may be associated with malignancy, cirrhosis, pancreatitis. It may represent hemothorax when there is blood in the pleural space, not fluid, uh, that can be due to trauma or pus in the pleural space called empyema, uh, which may be um, associated with an adjacent pneumonia. And then rarely we see chirothorax if there is injury to the lymphatics. On an AP chest radiograph, you need typically 250 to 600 cc's of fluid for it to become visible. So it is worth doing a lateral view to look at the posterior costophilic angle or you can do a decubitus view to reveal smaller amounts of pleural fluid. Ultrasound would be actually more sensitive to look for a small pleural effusion at the lung basis. Although pleural fluid is space occupying, you have to have a fairly large amount of pleural fluid for it to push the mediastinium to the side. It will have mass effect on the underlying lung though, and there is almost always underlying atelectasis seen on a chest CT. Now, as you can see, this patient has uh, a meniscus. Uh, if there would be a hydropneumothorax, meaning there would be air also in the pleural space besides the fluid, you would no longer see this meniscus sign, but it would level out horizontally. This is a good example of multiple hydropneumothoraces in the right hemithorax. You can see two air fluid levels. This also tells me that this is multilocurated, meaning that the patient probably had some prior injury to the pleural space and there are adhesions allowing for the air and fluid locurate into multiple small collections. There is also a very small left pleural effusion as well. So we looked at pleural fluid, uh, pleural nodules and calcifications. There are actually tumors of the pleura that can occur as well. Uh, there are some primary pleural tumors, such as uh, the pleural fibroma or solitary fibrous tumor of the pleura. You can see mesothelioma or metastatic disease to the pleura, uh, which you can see with adenocarcinomas, uh, breast cancer typically, uh, or pleural lymphoma. This chest radiograph demonstrates sub-tissue density along the right pleural surface. You can see how this looks Marked a different from simple fluid, even from the located pleural fluid, as it is more nodular in appearance. 
and the correlating CT scan from a different patient shows you um, sub-tissue thickening of the pleura. This is a typical appearance of a mesothelioma. Pneumothorax, as you know, means air in the pleural space. When you look at a chest radiograph, you should be able to see the lung markings going almost all the way out to the periphery. And in case of a pneumothorax, the lung markings stop sharply at the pleural edge and the rest of the thoracic cavity is filled with air, therefore it should be darker. This is not to be confused with skin folds. So if you really magnify this and look at it, you can see the lung markings going through and through the line. So you do have a sharp line, but the lung markings go through. This you oftentimes see with other emaciated individuals where the skin you know, folds up behind the back as they put the uh, x-ray plate behind them. Tension pneumothorax is an emergency, so you should be able to recognize that. With tension pneumothorax, you will see also mediastinal shift to the contralateral side, and the diaphragm is going to be pushed down as well. So here you can see that the left hemidiaphragm is lower than the right hemidiaphragm, and the trachea is already shifting over to the right side. So this is a large tension pneumothorax. Obviously, the air in the pleural space is going to go to the most non-dependent portion, which on an upright patient is going to be the lung apices. However, on a patient who is laying down, it might not be the lung apex, but it might be the lung base or outlining the mediastinum. This is a neonatal chest radiograph. This is a normal cardiotimic contour for a neonate. You can see that uh, there is some ground glass opacities in the airway, and there is these dark you know spaces inferiorly so this is the air field pleural space at the lung bases and there is also like a very subtle dark outline of the cardiac contours that's the pneumothorax uh, this other neonate has a tension pneumothorax so he recognized that the right hemidiaphragm is pushed inferiorly the mediastinum is shifted over to the left side and the underlying lung is completely collapsed. Just to review the tubes and lines that we see here, so this is a pleural drain. You can actually appreciate the two small side holes, which should be in the thoracic cavity. There is an endotracheal tube above the carina, and there is an enteric tube in the stomach. <laughs>